intimacy. The fourth is inspiration, which is enthusiasm. The fifth is forgiveness, which is compassion. The sixth is satisfaction, which is cheerfulness. And the seventh is expiration, which is wisdom. We call these the keys, or the keys of heaven. Now you might have heard other groups talking about keys before. One in particular, they even have keys in their logo. Well, where are those keys? What do those keys do? Why? All good questions I would be asking. Of course, they would say that these are metaphorical keys, that really it was from the form of speech of Jesus Christ speaking to Peter, saying that, uh, that uh, the keys of heaven are given to you, and that's based on translation, and dubious at best translation. But here we're talking about practical keys, real keys. Why? Keys of heaven designed to bring you into alignment, to align the flesh, the mind, and the soul. The flesh, the flesh, the mind, and the spirit. We know exactly what they are. Now, I know time is, is running out, so let me just cover the next two sets. So those are the seven keys. Recognition, trust, obligation, inspiration, forgiveness, satisfaction, and expiration. They're the seven sacraments. Now, they then build 14 sacraments. And those 14 sacraments that play a function in all of our lives are called the cardinal sacraments. And the reason they're called the cardinal sacraments is that they are points, direction, hinges. That's literally what they are. And we call them the ways. Now, again, I, I'm sorry to be rushing, but I will cover quickly what they are, but you'll see them. So I'm going to read them out just as a list. The carnal sacraments are consecration, offering, matrimony, union, record, penance, oath, testimony, investiture, clemency, sponsor, convocation, prescription, and promulgation. So those 14 carnal sacraments are called the way and present in every one of those sacraments are the keys, the seven sacraments I mentioned in the first. And then we have the third set of sacraments which we call the apostolic life sacraments and we also call the means. And these are at present the same that are listed on the site at the moment with one exception we change uh, one of them to uh, the concept of epinoia and those apostolic life sacraments are celebrations of our life during progressions of our life to help us so in summary the sacraments now are the keys the ways and the means of the divine being ever present in our lives and that I believe is as strong as I can express to you that the divine is playing a very key part in making sure that we're not simply mimicking, we're not simply copying, we're not simply going out there and writing things for the sake of them. We are dealing with a foundation, a foundation that I believe will stand the test of time. Well, we've run over time. I have covered a lot of areas. I thank you. I thank you for listening. And I look forward to answering questions. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you very much, Frank. Um, maybe we can go, we might have time to go into a little bit further um, uh, as questions come forward. Um, just as a reminder for everyone, if you'll type in your question, if you're on chat, and type question in all of her case. And then after that, in proper case, type in your question. The first question we have, Frank, uh, is would you please define sacrament? Yes. I'm going to read to you the exact definition that has been updated for sacrament that will be present in the updated section of Ecclesiastical Law. We define a sacrament as a valid sacrament is an important sacred rite also known as a ritual, 
instituted by the authority of the divine creator, entrusted to the society of one heaven, through which certain divine property or action is properly conveyed or affected in the presence of the manifest spiritual. Now, that's a very formal description, but the way I would describe it in a simplified manner is a sacrament is either the conveyance of some divine property or the recognition of some action which is then considered divine or some or makes something divine that assists us in our life in living a fulfilled and purposeful life and every day trying to help us reach our full potential and communion with both the divine with the universe and with our community okay i hope that helps um yeah that's that should should help and i didn't know if you wanted to go into it's a further importance of the, the the sacraments yet or if you wanted to wait and cover that as things unfold. no no well i'll add that now we can come back i think one of the things that i mentioned that we we're not taught this i don't want us to know this but every single critical administrative process is the public side of a private sacrament at present every single one of them which means that many of our administrative processes are corrupt in the world because the sacraments that underwrite them are corrupt so that if we want to see uncorrupted administration we in fact have to prepare uncorrupted sacraments that's the challenge that's why it's taken so long that's why there's been these ongoing discussions and debates and weeks now of deep deep theosophical theological philosophical arguments about particular words and particular actions and particular meaning because sacraments sacred rituals underpin all religious custom and are the private of the public actions that underwrite all key public functions so it is the foundation stone all right yes very good thank you frank uh well right into that uh aspect of it regarding the courts and defender of the bond who is the defender of the bond Well, that's a good question. I would say that the defender uh, in a court would be the the ultimate um, uh, guardian, um, and I would suggest that the um, the ultimate guardian in uh, their system is the attorney general. So, general is a militaristic role, and I would suggest that that would ultimately be a power vested in in that kind of office. Um, I other than that, I'm really speculating. I mean, I haven't, I haven't done enough research into that title, the history of that title, and its use to give you a more accurate answer. Well, that does make sense if you put it all this together as far as what the Attorney General does and uh, the fact that it's all part of the military-industrial complex. Yep. Is what he, yeah. Uh, okay, well, the next question... And real quick, let me remind the callers on the phone, as uh, if you have a question, you can press star 8 on your phones and put yourself in the question queue, and we'll get to your questions on the phone. Uh, next question we have is, can you talk about blood and bloodlines, and is the bloodlines really important regarding families trying to do research uh, you know, back into their history, their bloodlines? Good, good question, because we, we, we have spoken about this in the past, but you know, over time we go into different topics and new people yeah. come on and, look, I forget. And so it's important to, to remind ourselves. In the covenant of one heaven and in Eucadia moving forward, we say that it is the end 
of the blood covenant. It is the end of the age of Mithra. And so blood, blood claim, blood right and blood sacrifice no longer has any validity as the basis or the claim of a higher standing. Let me explain what I mean by that exactly. I am saying that under the covenant of one heaven, we are bringing to life the golden rule explicitly. All are equal, we say. All are equal, including myself. Now, to prove that, I step down at a historic moment to be a visitor because all are equal. It's one thing to say, it's another thing to do it. It, it, it is crucial. It means that any of the research or the background of the Kulian that were the only holy family, the name holy, that played a crucial part of history, but through their arrogance and through their control for many thousands of years, before other groups took over, events unfolded and they had an indirect part to play in their own demise. So that's merely a reference back to history of explaining why we are where we are today. So my argument is, does blood have a part to play in the future? No, it doesn't. Does blood have a part to play in the ending and the fulfillment of a covenant, the satisfaction of the terms of a trust before moving forward? Well, I'd say yes, it does. Because <clears throat> there were claims made to begin with, there needs to be a clarity and a closure moving forward. If one unlocks something, one who has some claim to that, should close it. So there is a particular group that raise themselves above all others that garnered knowledge and religious connection and abilities to tap into the divine and made themselves gods above others. They helped create a universal spoken language that they considered writing an abomination. And they hurt the evolution of the world. They didn't help it. Yes, they had knowledge, but they were as much fanatics of control as the present group. And in fact, I would say worse. They were worse than the present. The present at least give us certain technologies. They give us certain freedoms. These people treated the world absolutely as cattle and they were called the Kulian the Holy Collins Kalan all that so we come to an end in trying to heal what was an injury that caused their own demise and that's the only reason that I reference the blood because the blood is true the blood is real there is a historic context to that that's all to end an age not to perpetuate an age, to end an age, to bring an age where blood does not have a part to play. So that's a long-winded answer, but there's some very important issues there. I hope that answers the question on blood. Yes, thank you very much, Frank. Thank you for going into that uh, a little bit further detail. I think that helps a lot. Uh, well, the next question I have on the, from the chat group here is, uh, can you talk about practical application regarding chakras in the context of the Akkadia model. Absolutely. Well, as you know, the predominant, well, as I think most people hopefully know, the predominant information that is provided when one tries to understand the chakras or the Kabbalah, because they are aspects of the same, different description of the same thing, is the description of uh, knowledge, but more knowledge in terms of meditation, in vibration, and vibration being sound, and sound and vibration also being colour. So colour, sound, and meditation knowledge are the main inputs that are suggested with, with chakras. What 
you can't